there's a lot of different things in on one that are fun to explore and play with, you know, between presets and some of the capabilities and some of the filters and tools and masks and all that. But there's one thing they updated about a month ago that for me is really helping me get better color overall. And it's when I combine it with another thing that I like to do really gives me great results. I'm going to talk about it in this video. Let's take a look here. I've got this photo from the Oregon coast and I've done a couple of things, which is I cropped it and I applied Brilliance AI. You can kind of see that here. Let me show you in develop. Brilliance AI is turned on. As you may know, it uh, applies local adjustments. In this case, it identified the sky and the water automatically. Let me show you the starting point, which is there quite a bit darker. And I have now with Brilliance AI, I brightened a little bit. And of course it's enhanced the color slightly, but I want to talk about how I like to enhance color in on one and one of the cool new things that you can do and why I think this is such a good thing to have. So I'm going to go into effects and I'm going to open up a filter called color balance. So it's right here. And then you get this nice little view. There's three sections. There's opacity, which is basically the strength, how much of the effect that you create is applied to your photo. And there's styles, which are kind of like presets, where if you click on it, it will pre-apply whatever that style represents on your photo. And then, of course, there's the main section here, which is what we're going to talk about. Now, in the past, color balance was all sliders, and so you just kind of move things around. But they updated it to be a little bit more modern looking and giving you these beautiful color wheels. And they basically represent the different tonal areas. So you've got shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, you will notice that as I hover over each one of these, there's a little thing that comes up above, like right above where it says midtones, you see an H with a zero, an S with a zero, and a B with a zero. The zero represents the value. They're all at zero because I've done no adjustments. The H represents hue or the color shade that you pick. S is, as you probably guess, saturation. And B is brightness or luminance. So how bright is the color and what color is it? So the hue is the color, the saturation is the intensity, and the B, uh, the brightness is, of course, how bright is it? Now, this is a really powerful tool, and it's really easy to use. There's three different things that you can do. There's a little circle here in the middle. There's a little circle on the edge, and then there's a little slider in the bottom. I'm going to start here in midtones, and I'm just going to move this slider on the bottom, and you will notice the midtones are getting brighter, and the B has now adjusted, and I'll go all the way just to show you. The B now says 100, so I've basically increased the brightness. That's what this slider is. It represents a brightness, but just for that tonal area, which is the midtones. I'm not brightening the entire photo. I'm just brightening the midtones. So maybe I want to bring that up a little bit brighter. Maybe I'll go to 40. I think that looks pretty nice. But of course, I want to play with the color and adjust the color, and that's what color balance is so good at. So you've got these two other sliders here, or these two little dots that you can adjust. The one on the outside of the circle, you can see it's sitting next to the red right now. What that represents is the shade or the hue. That is the H that's in that section above where it says midtones. So what you can do, of course, is you can grab that and you can move it around. And as you can see, the number will change. That H is changing from, you know, it was at 0 or 10 or whatever. And now it's at like 220, 230, which is always in the blues. Anyway, you can just circle around and pick a color that you like. So that's an easy way to pick the hue. But honestly, I don't pick the hue that way because this one represents what you probably guess is saturation. That's the one that we haven't talked about yet. But you can also adjust the hue. So this one sort of performs double duty. Now, it defaults to being in the center, which is white, which is, of course, saturation of zero. But as you highlight this and grab it with your mouse, you can move it all the way around in the circle. So I can spin that around and you will see the hue is adjusting. But of course, this uh, slider or this little dot represents saturation. So what happens is as you slide it around and pick the different angle, that is, of course, the hue that you're adjusting. However, if you're in the center, you remember that saturation was zero. But as I drag it to the outer edge, let's say I want to go into the little bit warmer tones here. As I drag it to the outer edge, you'll see the saturation number or the S up above has increased. And so the distance from that center point to the edge is the saturation. Closer to the center, less saturation. Further to the center, or in other words, closer to the edge is more saturation. So I don't really even use the hue slider because you don't need to. You just grab the saturation slider. You pick whatever kind of color hue you want to go into, and then you pick the distance from the center to pick the amount of saturation that you want. Let's say I want to do something a little bit warmer in the highlight, or excuse me, in the midtones. 
Maybe I'll do something, I don't know, maybe about like that. So that's giving me a nice warm look overall, and that's because I am in the midtones, which generally covers a large part of the photo. Maybe I want to go in and play with the shadows a little bit as well. I'm going to come over here, and I tend to like my shadows a little bit cooler, a little bit darker. So that's going to be a little bit more of a blue. And then I'm going to take that brightness slider a little bit to the left, which is going to darken the shadows. And so again, I'm just kind of playing with color, but also brightness of that color in that tonal area. And then for highlights, it's a sunset. So hey, why not? Let's just go ahead and take a little bit of warmth into the highlights as well. Maybe something like that. I don't think I need to play with brightness, but maybe I'll give it just a little bit of a nudge just in case. And you can see if I turn this off, there's the before, quite a bit flatter color-wise, not really warm as, uh, or at least not as warm as I want the sunset to be. And after, quite a bit warmer, quite a bit more vibrant. And that's how that tool works. But there's a couple things I like to do to kind of really fine tune my edits within color balance. The first one, of course, is opacity, where you can just drag this to have less amount overall. So at 100, you get all the effect. At zero, that's like not having the filter at all. And so you can adjust that accordingly. And that's a good way to do it. I'm not going to use the opacity. I prefer to use luminosity masks. Now, if you're not familiar with luminosity masks, my last video about on one was actually about luminosity masking. You may want to check that out. It really gives you a lot of detail about how to use them. But you can always just click on the masking icon. It will open up the masking window here. And as you may know, this little light bulb represents luminosity mask. Now, real briefly, a luminosity mask is a mask uh, based on light value. So by default, the brighter parts of the photo get more of the effect and the darker parts of the photo get less of the effect. So I'm going to go ahead and click the button there and you will see that the effect faded pretty significantly overall. So before I would used the luminosity mask with no mask, I was getting a whole lot of that color all over the photo. And while I liked it, it was nice and warm and vibrant. It felt like a little bit too much. So I could have used the opacity slider or for me, I like to go in and apply luminosity mask. So if I click on the view mask icon, that's what my mask looks like. The bright parts get more of the effect, the dark parts get less. And one of the things I like to do, which I talk about a lot in that last luminosity masking video, is come in and play with levels because it really gives you a lot of control over the mask. I'm going to do that move right there and I'm going to pretend that's about all I want to do. I think that looks pretty nice. And if I wanted to, if I still thought it was a little too much, I can of course refine my mask. And I can also double up and come in and maybe pull down the opacity a little bit and maybe make that an 87 instead of 100. Regardless, color balance combined with an opacity adjustment and a luminosity mask took my colors from that to that, which is a nice, subtle, and I think beautiful warming up and a bit of saturation applied across the image. Now, there may be something else I want to do, and I like that mask that I created with the levels adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that mask. And I'm going to add one more filter just to give it a little bit more of a sunshiny look. So I'm going to use this sunshine filter. And there it is, sunshine. I'm going to turn this up to like 50, 60, 70. I'm going to add some warmth and saturation, getting a bit over the top, but that's okay. I'm going to come in here and paste the mask. And as soon as I do, because it's a mask based on light values, less in the dark areas, more in the brighter areas of the mask, which looks like that. I'm getting a less intense overall look to that sunshine. And again, I've got an opacity slider here. If I want to pull that back, let's say I want to make that 90% instead of 100. Using the opacity slider along with the luminosity mask gives you a ton of control over how intense your edit is. In this case, I'm doing two color edits to enhance the sunset. And I feel like I've really got a nice overall look to it by combining these two filters with the opacity sliders and the luminosity mask. But I want to point out color balance, which is a large part of what uh, impacted this photo. If I didn't have color balance added to this photo, I'm going to turn it off and you will see there's the color before, which to me is a little bit more washed out, a little bit less moody, perhaps a little bit less, I don't know, sunsetty. I mean, it's, it's yellow, but it's not gentle. It's not smooth. And it doesn't have any of that kind of pink that I like in my sunsets, but adding color balance back in, there we go. Color balance really had a huge impact. And then luminosity mask opacity slider kind of double up on adjusting the intensity of that filter or that tool puts color balance really nicely across the image and I think has a huge impact on the final result. So if you look at the before and the after, beautiful, powerful color control 
with these beautiful, fun color wheels in the color balance slider, and then a little adjustment to opacity, and using a luminosity mask really gets you a long way without doing very much. Minor adjustments, custom masking, a little bit of an opacity adjustment, stick a couple of things on there, you get a beautiful look. That's the power and the fun of being able to use these tools on images in On One. And I'm a huge fan of color balance. I've used it for years in multiple products, and I love having these color wheels. I think it's a great innovation. So hats off to On One. And one more time, before and after, we've got a beautiful sunset. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, adios.